Welcome to How to Make Your Patents a WMD, Weapon of Market Domination, Introductory Strategies with Dale Holling. Hi, I'm Dale Holling and I'm a patent attorney. I've done work for Fortune 500 companies, high technology startups, and independent inventors. I first started formulating the ideas in this program when I was working in Chicago for Motorola. Since then, my clients and I have perfected these ideas. Using these ideas, my clients have created patents that are WMDs, weapons of market domination. The only reason to obtain a patent is to make money. This simple fact is often forgotten in all the legal machinations associated with patents. In order to make money using patents, you have to understand what a patent is, what its advantages and limitations are, and what the potential cost and benefits are when obtaining a patent. The most savvy business people always attempt to maximize the return and lower the risk on any investment. This program is going to give you the tools to evaluate your return on the investment in a patent and give you tools to reduce your risk in filing. We will explore in more depth how to maximize your return on a patent strategy in a separate program. But in the limited time we have today, we cannot get into depth on all the topics we are going to cover. However, we will provide you some tools to get started. Now let's get started turning your patent into a WMD, Weapon of Market Domination. In order to understand how to create a patent that's a WMD, first I will discuss the value of patents using some case studies as examples. Second, I will discuss the legal rights you obtained with a patent. Third, I will discuss the economic reasons for obtaining a patent. Fourth, I will discuss the cost and timeline for obtaining a patent. Finally, I will discuss strategies for delaying the cost of obtaining a patent. Due to the limited time available for this course, I have focused on providing you the necessary analytic tools to make a wise patent investment decision. Another program discusses in more detail how to maximize your patent portfolio to create a WMD, Weapon of Market Domination. The Value of Patents, Case Studies. So how valuable are patents? The inventor of the air hockey game table would have answered pretty darn valuable. He had no competitors during the lifetime of the patent on air hockey. Would you say that was powerful? I think you would agree that this patent on air hockey was a weapon of market domination. Wouldn't you like to have a patent that completely eliminated all your competition? What do you think your margins would be in a market you completely owned? I should tell you the day the patent expired, the company that had invented air hockey had a dozen competitors. Some of you may have guessed that the patent on air hockey was owned by Brunswick. Xerox patent on the photocopier allowed them to not have any competitors in the photocopier market for the life of the patent. However, Xerox was not satisfied with just owning the market for photocopiers. Xerox used an aggressive patent strategy to build a fence around their original patent by filing multiple patents on every improvement they developed on the photocopier. This allowed Xerox to continue to completely own this market long after the first patent on photocopiers expired. While competitors could produce a photocopier as described in the expired patent or patents, by then customers demanded the functions that Xerox had developed and patented. Xerox had such a dominant position in the photocopier market for so long that when you wanted a photocopy, you said, could you Xerox this for me? Clearly, Xerox had developed a patent portfolio that was a weapon of market domination. Wouldn't you like to develop a patent strategy? It allowed you to dominate your market for years? I hope that was a rhetorical question for most of you. Polaroid owned the instant photography business for the life of the underlying patent. Like Xerox, they aggressively patented every improvement on instant photography. This allows them to still completely own the instant photography business today. In the late 1980s, Kodak attempted to penetrate the instant photography business. Polaroid sued Kodak for patent infringement of several of their patents and won the largest patent damages award in history of $870 million. Wouldn't you like to receive $870 million for a competitor daring to enter your market? Clearly, Polaroid's patents were weapons of market domination. 
In just over 10 years, IBM has gone from virtually no royalties from their patent portfolio to having over $3.5 billion a year in royalties. You heard right, that was $3.5 billion. These are just a few examples of how patents have been used as weapons of market domination. There are plenty more examples. If you're an individual inventor and want to license your invention to a company, you want to be able to tell the potential licensor that your patent can have this kind of impact for them. Rights obtained with a patent. In order to understand how these companies were able to create patents that were weapons of market domination, you need to understand the legal rights you obtain with a patent. Under United States law, a patent gives you the right to exclude others from manufacturing, importing, selling, or using your invention. Two key points in the previous sentence are the right to exclude. A patent does not give you the right to do any of these things. The second key point is your patent right is limited to the United States. If you want patent protection in foreign countries, you will need to file for a patent in those countries. There are a number of strategies for effective foreign filing. However, this subject is beyond the scope of this program. At the Law Office of Dale B. Halling, we handle these issues all the time. You can check out our website or call us for more information. It is very important that you understand the patent right is a right to exclude. This points out clearly that a patent is a limited term property right and not a monopoly. It is possible to obtain a patent on your invention and still not be able to practice the invention without infringing on another patent. My favorite example is this. You invent the first laser. For all you intellectual capital business consultants out there, this gets a little bit technical. Here it goes. The first laser is a ruby rod laser that has a ruby rod as the lasing medium, a flash lamp as the optical pump, and a pair of mirrors that form an optical resonant cavity. I invent the CO2 laser. It has a gas as the lasing medium, an electric field formed by a large capacitor as the pump, and a pair of mirrors as the optical resonant cavity. Nothing in your patent on the ruby rod laser tells me how to build a CO2 laser. As a result, I can obtain a patent on the CO2 laser. Let's assume you have a good patent attorney and he writes very broad claims for your ruby rod laser. The claim might be a lasing medium, a pump, and an optical resonant cavity. If I try to build or sell CO2 lasers, then I will infringe your patent since I have a lasing medium, the CO2, I have a pump, the electric field, and I have an optical resonator. An interesting twist on this example is to assume the market for lasers is mainly in CO2 lasers. Then neither of us can make the laser demanded by the market without cross-licensing. Note that this sort of thing happens all the time in the semiconductor industry. This example further points out that you need to use patents to build a fence around your invention, even if you have a very broad fundamental patent. This is the strategy that allowed Xerox to dominate the photocopier market and allowed Polaroid to dominate the instant photography market. Wouldn't you like to have a patent strategy that allowed you to dominate your market? My laser example points out that you need to specify to your patent attorney whether you want a patentability opinion or a clearance opinion. A clearance opinion gives you an opinion on whether you are likely to infringe a patent if you produce an item. A clearance opinion works like a passport. It allows you to travel between countries. A clearance opinion may be more important than a patentability opinion to a manufacturer. A patentability opinion tells you whether your invention is likely to obtain a patent. A patentability opinion is like a geological survey that states that you could build your house on this lot. We do not have the time to cover the details of clearance and patentability opinions now. At the Law Office of Dale Halling, we handle these issues every day. Call us for more information. Our contact information is given at the end of this program and on the cover of this program. Cost and Timeline for Patents For a businessman to be able to make an informed investment decision, he needs to know the cost and time frame the investment will require and compare them to the economic benefits. Today I'm going to present the cost associated with obtaining a patent in a traditional patent acquisition timeline. After this I will discuss how these costs can be deferred to lower the risk of an investment in a patent. The traditional task in the timeline for obtaining a patent 
is to first have a patentability search and opinion. This costs between $1,000 and $2,500. It takes about a month to obtain. The next step is to prepare and file the patent application. This costs between $4,000 and $12,000 and takes about two months. The patent application is published 18 months after it is filed. It usually takes the patent office about a year to provide you with a substantive response on whether your invention is patentable. This starts what I call the negotiation phase, where we dicker with the patent office over what is patentable. This stage takes from three to six months on average. The patent application is then allowed and issues. The total cost of the patent averages $8,000 to $30,000 based on the complexity of your invention. The total time from filing to issuance varies from about one year to three years. Let's go back and expand a little. The most common first step in acquiring a patent is to perform a search and obtain a patentability opinion from your patent attorney. The search looks for prior art patents and other prior art material that may limit the scope of your patent or even prevent you from obtaining a patent. Prior art is anything that may be used to prove that you are not the first inventor. The opinion evaluates the prior art and gives you an informed legal opinion on whether your invention is patentable. A search and opinion has two functions. One is to reduce the risk that you will not obtain a patent. Note that the cost of a search and opinion is usually significantly less expensive than filing for a patent. The second function is to help the patent attorney craft better claims for your patent. The claims of a patent define the technological area you have exclusive rights in. Using the search, your patent attorney is able to increase the likelihood of defining the largest technological area in the claims of the patent without stepping on the prior art. Claims are like the boundaries of your land. All things being equal, you want the largest area of land possible. A patent search can help your patent attorney determine these boundaries. The value of a search depends on a number of factors. If you're an expert in your area of technology and the related market, the search is unlikely to provide you with additional information. This is particularly true for fast-changing markets where the published patents or patent applications have a lag time of at least 18 months. Examples of such technology areas include internet-related technology and telecommunications inventions. On the other hand, a search is very helpful and important in slow-moving areas of older technologies. For example, door latches, cranes, and hand tools. It is possible for you to perform a search yourself online using the United States Patent and Trademark Office's website, www.uspto.com. Gov. Note that the USPTO stands for United States Patent and Trademark Office. The database allows you to perform word searches on U.S. patents back to 1976. As a result, these searches are less useful for technologies that existed before the 1970s. You should consult with your patent attorney on whether a search and opinion makes economic sense in your case. Note that you're not required by law to perform a search. As of 2003, the cost of obtaining a search and opinion varies from about $1,000 to $2,500. It usually takes about one month to obtain a search and opinion. Traditionally, if the search and opinion stated a patent could be obtained, the next step was to file a patent application. The out-of-pocket cost of filing a patent application varies from about $4,000 to $12,000, depending on your technology and the complexity of your invention. Note that these prices were as of 2003. A simple mechanical invention with no moving parts would be in the $4,000 area, while a complex electrical, software, or biotech patent would be in the $10,000 to $12,000 range. An example of a simple mechanical invention would be an improved float for cement. An example of a complex electrical invention would be a new memory circuit for an integrated chip. The time required to prepare and file a patent application is highly dependent on the availability of the inventors. On average, it takes two months to prepare and file. However, this time can vary from under a week to over six months. I should also tell you that the quality of a patent application is also dependent on the inventor's input. The inventor must stay actively engaged in the patent application process to obtain a top quality patent. This is similar to your tax return. 
you know your accountant cannot prepare an accurate tax return unless you provide him with good accounting information. Once the patent application has been filed, there's a delay of one year on average before we hear a substantive response from the patent office. By law, the patent office has to give us the first substantive response within 14 months of our filing the patent application. The only compensation if the patent office does not make this goal is the life of your patent is extended for any delay. A patent is valid for 20 years from the date of filing. For many electronics and software companies, the extension in the life of the patent is not seen as much compensation. However, for pharmaceutical companies, the extension can be very important. The next stage in obtaining a patent is the negotiation period. This starts with the first substantive response from the patent office. The first response you receive commonly rejects most of the claims of the patent application and provides the legal reasons and prior art for the basis of the rejection. Now you might think that we want all the claims allowed in the first response. However, if you put an offer on a piece of real estate and the seller immediately accepts the offer, you will probably wonder if the real estate could have been bought for less. Similarly, if the first response, commonly called the first office action, allows all the claims, your patent attorney may advise you to file new, broader claims. This is like asking for more land or a bigger house. Unfortunately, you can't ask the patent office to lower their price. As I said, commonly, all the claims are rejected in the first office action. After reviewing the material from the patent office, we can argue they are incorrect or modify one or more claims or both. This is normally done in a written response. This exchange of offers can go back and forth commonly from one to four times. If you cannot get agreement, by which I mean allowance of your claims after four exchanges, you need to appeal the case or drop the patent application. The overwhelming majority of patent applications obtain allowance within this one to four exchanges. Your experience and the time it takes vary significantly on the patent examiner assigned to your case. It is not possible to select the patent examiner, so be aware that the patent process is a human process with all the variations. Once we receive the first office action from the patent office, we have three months to respond without paying an extension fee. The patent office then has four months to respond back to us. The total time from filing to allowance, which is the end of the negotiation stage, can be from just under a year to over three years, depending on the technology. Simpler, older, and less active technologies take less time on average. Consult with your patent attorney to find out the likely time frame in your case. The cost of the negotiation stage, the issue fee, and any publication fee commonly is about the same as the cost of filing the patent application. Thus, if you spend about $10,000 to file your patent application, you spend about $20,000 in total to have your patent issue. Obviously, you can spend more or less depending on the situation. However, you can always stop spending money on your patent application if you no longer believe the cost makes sense. In summary, the total cost of obtaining a patent can vary between $8,000 and $30,000, and the time frame can be between one year and three years. This cost must be balanced against the market advantage the patent will provide over its lifetime. While $30,000 is not chump change, it is often significantly less than your company will spend on sales and marketing of your invention. If the patent provides you a market advantage, or the other benefits of obtaining a patent exceed the cost by a factor of three or more, then the patent is a very good economic deal. Delay Strategies The costs of a patent application come at the early stages of commercializing your invention. This makes it difficult to estimate your return on obtaining a patent. If you do not have a revenue stream associated with a patent, then it is an extremely expensive speculative investment. So what can we do to reduce the risk when investing in patents? There are a number of ways to delay the cost. I suggest that people use provisional patent applications to establish an early filing date, but delay the cost of filing a regular patent application. A provisional patent application allows the inventor to say patent pending with their invention. Note, you do not say provisional patent pending, just patent pending. 
No one need know whether you filed a regular patent application or a provisional patent application. In addition, a provisional application establishes a filing or priority date. The provisional patent application gives you up to one year to file a regular patent application and claim priority off of your provisional. This means that for most practical purposes, the Patent Office will treat the regular patent application as if it was filed on the same day as your provisional. I think of a provisional as buying an option on a patent. There are fewer legal formalities with a provisional. As a result, provisional patent applications can be filed for significantly less money than a regular patent. Among patent attorneys, provisionals are controversial. As a result, every patent attorney has a different program for provisional patent applications. At the Law Office of Dale Halling, we have developed an inexpensive program for preparing and filing provisional patent applications. Using our program, the cost of filing a provisional is usually less expensive than obtaining a patent search and opinion. For more information on our provisional patent application program, please visit our website or call us. There are several situations where I believe provisional patent applications are not appropriate. For instance, if you invent a major or fundamental breakthrough in an area of technology, an example would be the laser. In the case of a fundamental invention, I do not believe the risks of filing a provisional justify the rewards. Another situation where provisional patent applications are inappropriate is when the invention is already generating sufficient income to pay for the regular patent application. A provisional should not be considered a no-risk strategy and when the invention can pay for the regular patent application, you should not delay filing. I suggest that as soon as the invention is generating significant revenue, you file. A provisional patent application may be used when the invention is not presently generating any revenue and is not an extension of an item that is producing revenue. This could be an independent inventor who is planning to create a business around the invention, or it could be a company with a total new and untested product or service. The value of a provisional application to an independent inventor whose only goal is to license the invention is somewhat less than an independent inventor who wants to start a business. However, I know a number of successful independent inventors that only license their inventions, that use provisionals to reduce their risk. They wait until a company is willing to license the invention to file a regular patent application if possible. In summary, you can use patents to create a WMD, a weapon of market domination. You can generate incredible profits when your patents allow you to control a market. Use provisional applications to reduce the risk of investing in patents by delaying the cost of a regular patent application until the return from the invention can be better assessed. I want to thank you for spending time with me. There were a number of topics I could not cover in the limited time available for this program. This program was therefore directed to initial patent acquisition strategies from a business point of view. As a result, a number of the legal issues were only covered in enough detail to provide a business person with a working knowledge of those issues. A future audio program will be directed to creating a patent portfolio that is also a weapon of market domination. Finally. I want to say good luck with your business and get out there and create a patent that's a WMD, a weapon of market domination. This program is copyrighted by Dale B. Halling, 2003. All rights are reserved. The law office of Dale B. Halling may be reached at 719-447-1990. The website is www.hollingip.com. That's www.hallingip.com. Thanks for listening.